SEP Fanfic Readings presents My True Love Gave to Me by Notebook and Ink Chapter 7 Jingle Spells Letters, Spring 2003 to Winter 2003 Hermione, in the parcel accompanying this letter is your Christmas present. I know I said our dalliance in my office was your gift, and even though I know you thoroughly enjoyed it, it was extremely ungentlemanly of me to let that be your only gift, and I could not let that stand. I'm sorry it's so late. It took me a while to think of what I should even get you, and then I had to figure out the magical component. Since what you got for me I can only use with you, what I got for you was quite clever. You may open it now. Take your time. I'll wait. Please enjoy this personalized stationery, ink, and quills that I have charmed to only be useful if you are writing to me. I fully expect you to put them to good use. D. P.S. I want to thank you for all your help with our custom potion order. Thanks to your consulting, we finally cracked the recipe, and our client is finally seeing incredible and lasting results. Bart has also been pestering me to inform you that should you ever decide creatures aren't your future, he would love to take you on as an apprentice. You made quite the impression on everyone that day. Draco. The gift is amazing, thank you, and you're right, it's very clever. Though knowing you, I'm not at all surprised you were able to execute such magic. However, I can only use them if you write as well. Maybe you should make a set for yourself. As I have told you before, you can use the iPod. I just have to put the music on for you. Plus, I put all I had on there before I left on New Year's Day, if you'll recall. I'm also slowly working on getting more for you from friends. So keep it up, and I'll take everything off the next time I'm home. You'll have to listen to hippogriff songs on repeat forever. Merlin, how is it possible I can both miss and not miss your smart mouth at the same time? You can be very frustrating. I'm happy that I could help with the potion, and that you finally figured out the puzzle so your customer could get some relief. If you ever need my help again, please don't hesitate to ask. You can also tell Bart that while I appreciate his offer, I am not ready to leave the creature life behind just yet. Speaking of which, I feel I should probably tell you that I won't be at the Foundation Gala again this year. As much as I was looking forward to pinching your arms, I have to stay here. Funding isn't great right now, so the Foundation has been moving people around, and we got left with a shortage. Perhaps next year you can twirl me around the ballroom. I know you can dance. XO. Hermione. P.S. See how easy it is to ignore your innuendos. Hermione, I don't need special stationery to write to you. I miss talking to you when you're not here, so if this is what it takes, so be it. Yes, 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 you put your music on the brick. I listen to some of it every day, and I can tell you we have very different tastes. The Spice Girls and Destiny's Child are not exactly my cup of tea, but I can see why you would like them. You say it's easy to ignore my innuendos, but I don't have the same level of willpower. I'm guessing the reason you miss my mouth so much is because you now know exactly what it's capable of. It misses you, too. I will let Bart know. He's going to be heartbroken. He hasn't missed a day yet asking if I've gotten a reply from you. Though I'll tell you, he's not wrong. Should you ever decide to leave the world of magical creatures, you could certainly have a job at the apothecary. Nepotism aside, you're brilliant. You would think the Foundation would do everything in their power to make sure their moneymaker was able to go to special events. Who's running that place? No matter. I suppose I can make do with Theo. He's a wonderful dancer as well, you know. Since we are on the subject of warning each other of things, I don't know what news you are able to get hold of down there, but I finally got the call we joked about from Witch Weekly. Both them and the Prophet sent someone by for interviews last week, so I'll be in the paper sometime soon. X. D. P. S. I would twirl you around a ballroom any time, anywhere. You need only ask. Dear Mr. Malfoy, on behalf of the Scamander Foundation, please accept our most heartfelt thanks for the donation you made after this year's Foundation Gala. We simply cannot express how far your most generous gift will go to changing the lives of magical creatures for the better. Because of your generous contribution, the Scamander Foundation will be able to expand its efforts to regions previously unattainable. 
your love and commitment to magical creatures should be commemorated. So the Scamander Foundation has dedicated a small statue of our mascot, a bow truckle, in your honor outside of our building. Again, we cannot thank you enough for your most generous endowment. Rolf Scamander, head of the Scamander Foundation. Draco, I cannot believe you donated that much to the Foundation. It is an obscene amount of money. I know it's going to a great cause, but what were you thinking? I did see you in the papers. My tent mate has her subscription sent here, but they come late just like everything else. You looked very handsome. I think my tent mate even clipped one of your photos. I see your mother finally wore you down about putting yourself more seriously on the marriage market. The girl with you at the gala looked nice. Her dress was stunning, and I bet she was a much better dancer than I or Theo. A fitting partner. Hermione. Hermione. Honestly, I was thinking if I gave them enough money to hire some more people, then maybe you could come home more than once a year. I'm a purely selfish person, remember? I didn't want the arse-kissing notes or the statue. I just wanted to see you. Even the strongest of stones will be worn down under the steady drip of water, Hermione, and my mother is nothing if not persistent. Yes, I agreed to the interview, saying I'm looking for a wife. In my defense. We decided before you left that we weren't exclusive, and I can't stop my mother from continuing to throw eligible women in my face, no matter how much I don't want her to. I did warn you about the articles. I hope you're not upset. But from what you've written, I'm guessing there is something lingering beneath the surface. Do you remember Daphne Greengrass? She was a fellow Slytherin our year. The girl in the dress is her younger sister, Astoria. I didn't even know she was going to be there, but my mother made sure we were in every photograph together. She seems to be my mother's pick for the next Malfoy matriarch, so I can only expect there is to be more pictures of us in the future. Personally, I'm still holding out hope for someone else. X. D. P.S. If I had my way, I would beat this letter in the race to you and sweep you off your feet before you even knew it was written. That's how much I miss you. Please don't be mad about the pictures. They aren't what they seem. Draco, it seems that what you were hoping for when you made your big donation will not be coming to pass. In fact, I'd say the opposite is happening. I know Rolf mentioned in his thank-you note how the Foundation can now reach previously unattainable regions. That means he is finally able to put together an undercover team in Asia to try and stop the illegal black market trading of magical creatures and their products. Because of the experience I have from the war, they want me to be one of the team leaders. I can't say no to this, Draco. It's too big of a chance to affect some real change for magical creatures, and I know you probably don't want to hear this, but it's all thanks to you, and I couldn't be more appreciative of what you've done. This assignment will be secretive and dangerous, so unfortunately you won't be able to write to me, and I don't know how often I'll be able to write to you, but I will when I can, nor do I know when I'll be back home again. I wish more than anything I could come back to give you a proper goodbye, but they want us here right away to get started. I'm not upset about the pictures, any more. You're right. We said we could be adults about things like that. Right now, we find ourselves in exactly the situation I was worried about. I'm leading a different kind of life, and I don't expect you to wait around. I wouldn't want you to. You deserve the chance to be happy, and if she makes you happy, then by all means, marry the girl. I'll try to write again soon. I'll miss you. XO, XO. Hermione. Return to Sender. Granger, what the fuck do you mean you're going to Asia? When? Why the hell do you goddamn Gryffindors always need to run into danger to save things? Fuck, Granger, I dance with one girl at a charity ball and you run off across the globe. Melodramatic much. Don't fucking say you'll miss me. If you knew you'd really miss me, would you even go in the first place? DM. D. We arrived in Asia, but I can't tell you where. The team is getting to know each other and setting up a base of operations. I volunteered to be one of the undercover operatives since I have the most dueling experience, as well as experience being behind enemy lines, shall we say. But we haven't reached that point yet. When we do, I'll be careful. XO. H. D. Got our first lead. Going in. No contact for a few months. We'll try to be safe. Miss you. XO. XO. H. 
D. Mission failure. Moderate loss. XO. H. D. Going in. XO. H. D. Won't be home for Christmas. XO. XO. H.